SRAM's new drivetrain is tough. Real tough. This is SRAM's brand new for 2023 drivetrain. This is all new Eagle, is wireless, and the way it mounts to the bike has been completely rethought. But first, why? Here's three key new features that SRAM focused on. One, more robust. Two, better shifting under load. And three, ease of use. It's more simple to install. It uses no derailleur hanger, and there's not a single adjustment screw whatsoever. These are SRAM's new Stealth Brakes, an all-new lever body design that runs much closer to the bar and paired with a full axis setup, bikes have never looked slicker and cleaner out the front. SRAM say the new drivetrain can be shifted under full power, even on an e-bike. And they've developed all-new full e-bike drivetrains too, with crank arms and chain rings for the most popular systems on the market with all new pod controllers that have been designed to offer better ergonomics and way more positioning options, this really is a massive update from SRAM. In fact, it's the biggest product introduction in SRAM's history. SRAM have been making Eagle drivetrains, so that's 12 speed, for six years, and they've been making one by drivetrains for 11 years. So this represents the next step in SRAM's drivetrain technology. It's a system that's interdependent on one another. And it starts by using SRAM's universal derailleur hanger technology. Now these are on most of the bikes that have come out in the past few years, and the way that the derailleur mounts onto the frame is sandwiched in between the rear triangle. There's no longer a derailleur hanger. It's actually part of the rear axle, so it sits in between the rear triangle. Three years ago, the first frames appeared with SRAM's then-new universal derailleur hanger technology. This foundation allowed SRAM to prepare for the idea for the new transmission and this new direct mount mech. Now, almost all frames have the UDH mounting standard. And today, over 3 million UDH frames have already shipped. UDH creates the space and size for all of this new kit to fit. So, if your frame was released within the past three years, and it uses SRAM's universal derailleur hanger technology, then this new kit will fit. I wanted to learn more about SRAM's new drivetrain, so I visited their HQ in Schweinfurt, Germany. Here are the top secret R&D departments and test labs. We've got a rare and exclusive look behind the scenes into how this new tech has been designed, developed and tested. Here we can see the various prototype stages of development of the components, many of which are 3D printed in various materials, and it shows how each part has been meticulously refined until the final samples are ready for production. To help with the robustness of the derailleur, SRAM made the decision to make the mech slimmer. It sits almost one centimetre more inboard closer to the bike, which means it's less prone to catch in on any passing obstacles. The biggest changes to the cassette is the shift in performance when under full load. SRAM's goal being both upshifts and downshifts to be more smooth under load, and the rider can now press the buttons without even having to think about it. And yes, this machine is pretty handy at testing all of SRAM's increased reliability claims. SRAM say the teeth on the cassette and the shifting design has been completely overhauled. The axis system now knows exactly which cog and exactly the orientation the chain is on the cog. The cassette has lanes mapped onto it, and when you press the button, the software shifts the mech at the exact time that it's in the right lane. Multiple shifts are delayed until the perfect time to release the chain onto the new cog. SRAM say that this isn't just a benefit for everyday riders. Athletes that compete at the highest level can now shift at absolute full pelt, where every second counts, 
and this can make a big difference. Back in SRAM's test lab, they have a machine for pretty much everything. Stretching, pulling, bending, blasting, and everything is tested thousands of times over. The drivetrain is run forwards and backwards, and at extreme angles that you'd never actually encounter in real life. Also sandblasted, contaminated, run underwater, and the chain is actually placed on the chain ring, but not actually engaged in the cogs and they run it like this for thousands of miles to test the performance. SRAM also have many thousands of miles of actual real-world test riding out on the trails, so it's not just all lab-based. And sometimes you just got to get creative in how you test. Like, you know, stand on the bike with a load of weight resting directly on the mech. One of the things that SRAM are saying with this new drivetrain is that actually it becomes better when you're pedaling harder because of the way that the uh, cassette has been designed and the derailleur is designed. Actually, it should be really good at shifting on e-bikes. And if you've ridden an e-bike and you've been in turbo, it can feel like and sound like a machine gun. If you hammer through the gears, you get this real bang, 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 bang. I always kind of feel like, oh, let's give these drivetrains some kind of mechanical sympathy, especially when we're using them with electronic shifting on motors that have 90 newton meters of torque like this Bros one here. So I'm going to test it. I've got a really steep climb here. I'm going to put it in the smallest cog and I'm just going to smash through the gears and feel what it is like pedaling up a really steep incline with turbo 90 newton meters of torque and hammering through the gears and let's see how it performs. So the bike's in one of the lowest cogs, maybe gear nine or 10, and I'm gonna change it straight away in turbo. You can hear it and feel it. Going up here when you're near the top of the cassette, can barely hear or feel it change. But well, I know it has because it's got a bit easier to pedal. This is so steep. Oh, okay. So, even with 90 newton meters through the motor, my leg power of whatever I'm putting out, 500 watts or 600 watts, up that super steep climb and smashing absolutely smashing through this cassette. What I've noticed compared to the existing or older axis, there's less mechanical noise. There's less mechanical kind of clattering through the cassette, like bang, bang, bang. You can still hear it. It's not super silent, but it feels like it's engaging those next cogs smoother. It's less noticeable. It's less kind of jarring. You know, sometimes you bang through it and you're like, oh, that didn't feel good. You don't get it so much on here. so. Yeah, I treated it with zero mechanical sympathy, zero respect there, but it still got me up this hill. And I found when I got to the top four cogs, it got even smoother up there. And when I got from gear second biggest to the biggest cog, I could barely even feel that transition whatsoever. So pretty decent. So if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm very particular about controls and pods and big kind of buttons on e-bikes. I think we've gone for a transition period over the past few years where we had these massive ugly displays and big horrible buttons. And I got quite irritated that bikes were amazingly built and then we had these monstrosities of clunky controllers. And I always thought the previous access was okay, but it wasn't quite as ergonomic as a, an actual shifter. You didn't get that same kind of sensation personally i didn't find anyway but the new controller pods i think are excellent on the bike for two reasons first of all it's extremely tactile when i'm pressing even with gloves on you can map them to change depending on if you want the top one to shift up or down and you can get loads of movement with the pod itself. With the prior access, you didn't have a huge amount of movement that you could position the shifters in, but these you've got way more rotation and side to side movement. So they tick the box for me in terms of the ergonomics, they feel fantastic to use. And in terms of the position of them, you've got way more scope to move them about. And I'm actually using the MMX version of it here. So it goes onto the uh, brake levers. It looks very, very clean. The layout looks 
yeah, really clean, especially this is an e-bike and it's one of the cleanest looking bikes out of anything, e-bike or non-e-bike, looks great. So, the biggest product introduction in SRAM's history, the new Eagle drivetrain. Thanks to SRAM's innovation, the Eagle drivetrain offers robustness, reliability and ease of use. You can shift under load, making it perfect for e-bikes, beginners and athletes. The direct mount mech revolutionises how we mount derailleurs to bikes, providing better compatibility between bike frames and drivetrains. Okay, so I've been riding this drivetrain on this bike since uh, around November 2022. And I'm really familiar with the Specialized Turbo Levo and how that works. And it's given me a really good understanding of what this is like on a bike, especially an electric mountain bike. Now I've been really familiar with Axis over the past few years. I've purchased two of them myself. More recently, I purchased one for my own personal bike, the GX Access. So I'm a big fan of the system as a whole. I love the fact that it's pretty much set and forget. There's no barrel adjusters, no things that you need to fiddle around with. Once it's installed, it's just there and ready to go through all weathers, mud, snow, ice, dust, nothing really seems to phase it. This takes everything to the next level and the performance has been brilliant. And I've got hundreds of miles on this and this barely looks used, this XX cassette. This has a couple of battle scars on it when I, where I've crashed. There's a couple of little scrapes that I can see just on here, but nothing major at all. And in fact, it does sit more inboard. It's around the centimeter closer to the bike. So it's less proud. There's less chance of it getting rock strikes and things like that. But having said that, in my experience with Access, I've never damaged one touch wood so far to the point it doesn't work. And they've all looked quite scraped and battered. So this, in terms of longevity, according to SRAM, is even more reliable. And the fact that you saw the tests, they're smashing it against this plate and it's absolutely getting battered and they're surviving. They're surviving real world use lab tests. So in terms of longevity, I've no doubt that this is going to last a fair old life. Now talking of life, I did find the battery life a little bit less. It was flashing red more than I remember my other access systems. I didn't time anything, so it's not scientific in the slightest, but I did notice that it was flashing red and I had to charge it a few times. And I do wonder if the clutch in here is stronger because it does seem like it requires a lot more force to get that to move. And I didn't notice any chain slaps. And, and it's one of those things that you don't really notice until you hear it. And I can't remember hearing many chain slaps. So I wonder if the reason that the battery didn't last quite as long is because that clutch is stronger and it's taking a little bit more force to move this. So the shifting performance is just brilliant. Like shifting under load on a 90 Newton meter motor that's putting out five, 600 watts plus a rider's leg power. And when you're burning up a climber's fast as you can, you're putting out a fair amount of watts, so combined maybe over a thousand watts easily that you're putting through this drivetrain. I have noticed when you're on these bigger cogs up here, it is so smooth and seamless. You can barely notice that you've shifted at all. The only reason you can tell is because it gets slightly easier to pedal and you're, you're at a higher cadence. There is still, there is still a little bit of noise on these lower cogs down here, the smaller gears, there's a bit more of a clunk you can definitely hear and feel it. So if I'm in one of these cogs here and I shift to a smaller cog, a harder gear, and when the motor's in turbo, you can still hear it. It's not totally silent, but I've no problem shifting under power. I don't need to think about it anymore. Just press the button, don't even release on the pedals, and it will wrap through that box. And there's no issues at all with shifting under load, which is brilliant, especially on an e-bike. And this in remarkable good condition, for hundreds of miles on this cassette. So the thing with this, similar to the last access, is it just works every time. You don't have to worry about it. It's pretty much set and forget once you've installed it. I did need to do the micro adjust when I first got it, which just moves the mech ever so slightly, fractions of a millimeter at a time, just to really align it. But since then, there's nothing that I've needed to do other than charge the battery. That is it, nothing. It's so seamless and it just works every time. So it does seem really robust and I've no doubt that SRAM's claims on more longevity, more robust system will become true. The only thing that I've actually needed to do is put some lube on it, that's it, nothing else at all. No, no maintenance and that's riding through the 
harsh British winter, which can really annihilate drivetrains quite easily. So I think the thing to call out is the slightly different install process. So you're not going to be familiar with this. So there is a video that SRAM have done that explains it. And as long as you follow that to the T, everything will work. But you can't just bolt it on, adjust B screws and all that kind of stuff. But it is easier because you no longer have to do it at SAM. You do it when the bike's in a stand. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Just follow the guide, install it, and it's on. And that is it. There's nothing else. There's no, no adjustment on here whatsoever once you've put it on the bike, which is super cool. I guess the biggest thing is going to be the cost, the barrier to entry, because this is SRAM's top, top level drivetrain. And on an e-bike, it comes as a system if you want to buy it. And you can't mix and match with old stuff. So if you've got existing access, you can't just buy the mech because it uses a completely different standard called the T-Type system. And SRAM needed to do this to get the shifting performance as good as this is. So you can't use an old chain or an old cassette with one of these. So you need to buy a complete new system. On an e-bike, the complete system is 1,800 pounds. Now that is for everything. So SRAM are doing complete kits now. And that means chain ring, crank arms, carbon crank arms, chain, cassette, uh, and derailleur. So 1800 quid, but it is SRAM's XX. It is the top of the range one. Now they also do an XO, one level down, which the cassette looks really similar. The derailleur, slightly heavier, comes with aluminium crank arms and a slightly different chain ring. And they do mounts for Bosch and Bros and other e-bike systems as well. Now I'm really hoping that it can get more affordable. And in the past, we've seen GX levels of their top flight kit come out at some point in the future. So no idea, but I'm hoping that happens because that is the biggest downside, the barrier to entry. It's expensive kit to buy. But honestly, this SRAM stuff is amazing. It works so well. I've always been a big fan of Access and now they've just made it even better. And especially the pods, those older shifters, they didn't really feel that ergonomic. And to me now that has completely been resolved. So this is a brilliant system and I've really enjoyed using it. Pop any questions you might have down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And as ever, thanks for watching. Subscribe for weekly e-bike videos. And I'll catch you soon.